to the next installment of Holes. Reading of Holes. Holes is a book that I'm reading. I hope you've been following along the past other chapters, or you'll be totally lost. So, make sure to go back to the other videos and look at them, unless you don't care. You just want to be relaxed. I can get, I can get six boys. They had stopped using the wheelbarrows. We dug shovel into the side of the hole. We scooped up some dirt and was raising it up to the surface when Zigzag's shovel caught him in the side of the head. He collapsed. He wasn't sure if he passed out or not. He looked up to see Zigzag's wild head staring down at him. I ain't digging that dirt up, Zigzag said. That's your dirt. Hey, Mom. Magnet called Caveman's been hurt. Stanley brought his fingers up to the side of his head. He felt his wet, his wet, blood and dirty. I mean, and, and a pretty big gash just below his ear. Magnet helped Stanley to his feet, then up and out of the hole. Mister Sir made advantage of a piece of sack of sunflower seeds and taped it over Stanley's butt. Then he told him to get back to work. Work. It isn't nap time. When Stanley returned to his hole, Zigzag was waiting for him. That's your dirt, Zigzag said. You have to dig it up. It's covering up my dirt. Stanley felt a little dizzy. He could see a small pile of dirt. It took him a moment to realize that it was the dirt which had been in the shovel when he was hit. He scooped it up, and Zigzag dug his shovel into the ground underneath where Stanley's dirt had been. Chapter 18 The next morning, Mr. Sir marched the boys to another section of the lake. And each boy dug his own hole five feet deep and five feet wide. Stanley was glad to be away from the big hole. At least now... He knew just how much he had to dig for the day. And it was a relief not to have the other shovel swinging past his head or the warden hanging around. He dug his shovel into the dirt and slowly turned to dump it into the pile. He had to make his turn smooth and slow. If he jerked too quickly, he felt a throbbing pain just above his neck where Zigzag's shovel had been. Part of his head between his neck and his ear was considerably swollen. There were no mirrors in camp, but he imagined he looked like a had a hard-boiled egg sticking out of him. The remainder of his body badly hurt at all. Wait, his remainder of his body hardly hurt at all. His muscles had strengthened, and his hands were tough and calloused. Still the slowest digger, but not all. That much slower than Magnet. Less than 30 minutes after Magnet returned to camp, Stanley spat in his hole. After his shower, he, s he put his dirty clothes in his crate and got out of the box of stationery. He 
He stayed in the tent to write the letter to so Squid and the other boys wouldn't make fun of him for writing to his mother. Dear Mom and Dad, camp is hard but challenging. We've been running obstacle courses and have to swim long distances on the lake. Tomorrow we learn. He stopped writing. As Zero walked into the tent and returned to his letter, he didn't care what Zero thought. Zero was nobody. To rock climb. I know that sounds scary, but don't worry. Stanley was one, was stand. I'm sorry. <laughs> Zero was standing beside him now, watching him write. Stanley turned and felt his neck throb. I don't like it when you read over my shoulder, okay? Zero said nothing. I'll be careful. It's not all fun and games here, but I think I'm getting a lot out of it. It builds character the other boys. I don't know how, said Zero. What? Can you teach me? Stanley didn't know what he was talking about. Teach you what? To rock climb? Zero stared at him in penetrating eyes. What? said Stanley. He was hot, tired, and sore. I want to learn how to read and write, said Zero. Stanley let out a short laugh. He wasn't laughing at Zero. He was just surprised. All this time, he had thought Zero was reading over his shoulder. Sorry, he said. I don't know how to teach. After digging all day, he didn't have the strength to try to teach Zero to write, read, read and write. He needed to save his energy for the people who counted. You don't have to teach me to write, said Zero, just to read. I don't have anybody to write to. Sorry, Stanley said again. His muscles and hands weren't the only parts of his body that had toughened over the past several weeks. His heart had hardened as well. He finished his letter. He barely had enough moisture in his mouth to seal the stamp the envelope. It seemed that no matter how much water he drank, he was always thirsty. Chapter 19 He was awakened one night by a strange noise. At first he thought it might have been some kind of animal and it frightened him. But, it was a sleep but as the sleep cleared from his head, he realized that the noise was coming from the cot next to him. The squid was crying. You okay? Stanley whispered. Squid's head jerked around. He sniffed and caught his breath. Yeah, I just... I'm fine. He whispered. Sniffled again. In the morning, Stanley asked Squid if he was feeling better. What are you, my mother? Asked Squid. Stanley raised and lowered one shoulder. I got allergies, okay? Okay, said Stanley. You open your mouth again, I'll break your jaw. Stanley kept his mouth shut most of the time. He didn't talk too much to any of the other boys, afraid he might say the wrong thing. They called him caveman and, and all that, but he couldn't forget that he was dangerous too. They were dangerous too. They were all here for a reason, as Mr. Sir would say. This wasn't the Girl Scout camp. Stanley was thankful that there were no racial problems. X-ray armpit and Zero were black. He, Squid, and Zigzag were white, and Magnet was Hispanic. On the lake, they were all the same reddish brown color, the color of dirt. He looked up from the hole to see the water truck and its trailing dust cloud. His canteen was still almost a quarter full. He quickly drank it down, then took his place in line behind Magnet and in front of Zero. The air was thick with heat, dust, and exhaust fumes. Mr. Sir filled the canteens. The truck pulled away. Stanley was back in his hole, shovel in hand. When he heard Magnet call out, Anybody want some sunflower seeds? Magnet was standing at ground level, holding a sack of seeds. He popped a handful into his mouth, chewed and swallowed shells and all. Over here, 
codex ring. The sack looked to be about half full. Magnet rolled up the top and tossed it the X-ray. How'd you get them with that Mr. Sarsine, you asked, armpit? I can't help it, Magnet said. He held both his hands up and wiggled his fingers and laughed. My fingers are like little magnets. The sack went from X-ray to armpit to squid. It's sure good to eat something that doesn't come from a can, said Armpit. Squid tossed the sack to Zigzag. Sally knew it would come to him next. He didn't even want it. For the moment, Magnet shouted, Anybody want some for our sleeves? He knew there was going to be trouble. Mr. Sure was sure to come back. And anyway, the salted shells would only make him thirsty. Come your way, caveman, said Zigzag. Air mail and special delivery. It's unclear whether the seeds spilled before they got to Stanley or after they dropped the bag. It seemed to him that Zigzag hadn't rolled up the top before throwing it. It was the reason he didn't catch it. But it all happened very fast. One moment the sack was flying through the air, the next thing Stanley knew, the sack was in the hole, and the seeds were spilled across the dirt. Oh man, said Magnet. Sorry, Stanley said as he tried to sweep the seeds back into the sack. I don't want to eat dirt, said X-Ray. Stanley didn't know what to do. The truck's coming, shouted Zigzag. Stanley looked up at the approaching dust cloud and back down the spilled seeds. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. What else is new? He dug his shovel into the hole and tried to turn over the dirt and bury the seeds. What he should have done, he realized later, was knock out one of his dirt piles back into his hole. But the idea of putting dirt into his hole was unthinkable. Hello, Mr. Sir, I said X-Ray, back so soon? It seems like you were just here, said Arvid. Time flies when you're having fun, said Magnet. Stanley continued to turn the dirt over in his pile. You Girl Scouts having a good time? Asked Mr. Sir. He moved from one hole to another. He kicked the dirt pile by Magnet's hole and he moved towards Stanley. Stanley could see two seeds at the bottom of the hole. As he tried to cover them up, he unearthed a corner of the sack. Well, what do you know, caveman? Said Mr. Sir, standing over him. Looks like you found something. Stanley didn't know what to do. Take it out, said Mr. Sir. We'll take it to the warden. Maybe she'll give you the rest of the day off. It's not anything, Stanley muttered. Let me be the judge of that, said Mr. Sir. Stanley reached down and pulled up the empty burlap sack. He tried to hand it to Mr. Sir, but he didn't take it. So tell me, caveman, said Mr. Sir. How did my sack of sunflower seeds get in your hole? I stole them from your truck. You did? Yes, Mr. Sir. What happened to all the sunflower seeds? I ate them. By yourself? Yes, Mr. Sir. Hey, caveman, shadow armpit, how come you didn't share it with any of us? It's cold, man. X-ray said. I thought you were a friend, said Magnet. Mr. Sir looked around from boy to from one boy to another, then back to Stanley. We'll see what the warden has to say about this. Let's go. Stanley so climbed out of his hole and followed Mr. Sir to the truck. He still had the empty sack. It felt good to sit in the truck, out of the direct rays of the sun. Stanley was surprised he could feel good about anything at the moment, but he did. It felt good to sit down on the comfort seat for a change and as the truck bounced along the dirt he was able to appreciate the air blowing through the open window onto the hot and sweaty face onto his hot sweaty face chapter 20 it felt good to walk in the shade of the two oak trees Stanley wondered if this was how the condemned man felt on his way to the electric chair appreciating all the good things in life for the last time. 
They had to step around holes to get to the cabin door. Stanley was surprised to see so many around the cabin. He would have expected Borden to not want the campers sticking so close to her home, but several homes were right up against the cabin wall. Holes were up against the cabin wall. I'm so sorry. <laughs> The holes were closer together here as well, and were of different shapes and sizes. Mr. Sir knocked on the door. Stanley still held the empty sack. Yes, the warden said, opening the door. There's been a little trouble on the lake, Mr. Sir said. Caveman will tell you all about it. The warden stared at Mr. Sir for a moment, then her gaze turned towards Stanley. He felt nothing but dread now. Come in, I suppose, said the warden. You're letting the cold out. It was air conditioned inside her cabin. The television was going. She picked up a remote and turned it off. She sat down on the canvas chair. She was barefoot and wearing shorts. Her legs were as freckled as her face and arms. So what is this you want to tell me? Stanley took a breath steady himself while Mr. Sir was filling the canteens. I snuck into the truck and stole the sack of sunflower seeds. I see. She turned to Mr. Sir. That's why you brought him here? Yes, but I think he's mine. I think someone else stole the sack and caveman is covering him up for x-ray or somebody. It was a 20 pound sack and he claims to have eaten them all by himself. He took the sack from Stanley and handed it to the warden. I see. The warden said again. The sack wasn't full, said Stanley, and I spilled a lot. You can check my hole. In that room, came in. There's a small flowered case. Will you get it for me, please? She pointed to the door. Stanley looked at the door, then at the warden, then back at the door. He slowly walked toward it. It was a kind of dressing room with a sink and a mirror. Next to the sink, he saw a case, white with pink roses. He brought it back to the warden, and she set it on the glass coffee table in front of her. She unclasped the latch and opened the case. It was a makeup case. Stanley's mother had one similar to it. He saw several bottles of nail polish, a polish remover, a couple of lipstick tubes, and other jar of powders. The warden held up a small jar, red nail polish. You see this, caveman? She nod he nodded. This is my special nail polish. Do you see the red, which dark red, red color? You can't buy that in the store. I have to make it myself. Stanley had no idea why she was showing it to him. He wondered why the warden would ever have to need to wear nail polish or makeup. Do you want to know my secret ingredient? He raised and lowered his one shoulder. The warden opened the bottle, rattlesnake venom. With a small paintbrush, she began applying it to the nails on her left hand. It's pretty harmless when it's dry. She finished her left hand. She waved it in the air for a few seconds, then began painting the nails on her right hand. It's only toxic when it's wet. She finished painting her nails, then stood up. She reached over and touched Stanley's face with her fingers. She ran her sharp, wet nails gently across down his cheek. He felt his skin tangle. The nail on her pinky just barely touched the wound behind his ear. A sharp sting of pain caused him to jump back. The warden turned to face Mr. Sir, who was sitting on the fireplace hearth. So you think he stole the sunflower seeds? No, nah, he says he stole them, but I think it was. She stepped toward him and struck him across the face. Mr. Sturt's... Mr. Sir stared at her. He was three. He had three long red marks slanting from the left side of his face. Stanley didn't know if the red was caused by her nail polish or his blood. 
It took a moment for the venom to sink in. Miss suddenly, Mr. Sh Mr. Sir screamed and scratched his face with both hands. Let himself fall over, rolling off the earth and onto the rug. The warden spoke softly. I don't especially care about your sunflower seeds. Mr. Sir moaned. If you must know, said the warden, I liked you better when you smoked. For a second, Mr. Sir's pain seemed to recede. It took several long, deep breaths. Then his head jerked violently, and he let out a shrill scream, worse than the one before. The warden turned to Stanley. I suggest you go back to your hole now. Stanley started to go, but Mr. Sir lay in the way. Stanley could see the muscles on his face jump and twitch. His body brithered, writh, brithered in pain. Stanley stepped carefully over him. Is he... Excuse me? Said the warden. Stanley was too frightened to speak. He's not going to die. The warden said, Unfortunately for you. Chapter 21. And that's where we stop today. I hope you enjoyed it.